If you're a Mac owner, you've probably seen this notification, warning that your startup disk is almost full. It's becoming such a common issue that Apple actually introduced a new feature in Mac OS to reduce clutter and optimize storage space. Now, the obvious reason why users are running out of space so quickly is due to Apple's tendency to equip their Macs with small drives, a problem that's only gotten worse in recent years. So in this video, we're going to find out why Apple appears to be stingy with storage space and how that's affected users. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and I want to thank Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. If you want to help decide which topics I cover, make sure you're subscribed, and voting polls like this one will show up in your mobile activity feed. Now, the Mac is a product that's very popular among content creators who require a lot of storage space for their video and photo files. Macs have always had fairly competitive base specs compared to their PC equivalents, except when it comes to storage space. Take the MacBook Pro for example. The 13-inch base model costs $1,300 and has virtually the same specs as the $1,250 Dell XPS 13. The only difference is that the MacBook Pro which is $50 more, has half the storage space, and upgrading the solid state drive to the same 256 gigabytes as the XPS 13 would cost $200, something the vast majority of customers don't do. So they end up going home with a pro-level machine capable of video editing, photo editing, and 3D rendering, but isn't capable of holding many of those project files, forcing users to either delete old files or move them to external drives, which can be an annoying, time-consuming process. Now, I mentioned how Apple charges quite a bit more than their competition for extra storage space, and when you combine this with the fact that base model Macs have significantly smaller drives on average, you begin to understand what's happening here. Apple is employing an upsell strategy that becomes extremely profitable considering the high margins on their solid state drives. Upgrading to a 1TB drive on the MacBook Pro costs $600. Compare that to one of the best external 1TB SSDs on the market, the Samsung T5, which retails for $180, more than a third less than what Apple's charging. Now, if you're wondering why computers like the iMac offer one terabyte of storage for significantly less than the MacBook Pro, it's because the base iMac has a hard disk drive rather than a solid state drive. So what's the difference? Well, hard drives are pretty old technology that go back to the 50s. They have a spinning disk with a moving arm that uses magnets to store and retrieve data. And today, you can get a high-capacity hard drive for a very affordable price. But there are drawbacks. The speed of a hard drive depends on how fast its platter can spin. And although there have been improvements over the years, spinning hard drives are still significantly slower than solid-state drives. Also, hard drives are fragile. They contain moving parts that operate at a high level of precision, so dropping a computer with a hard drive could result in corrupted data. Lastly, hard disk drives are rigid and can't be reshaped to accommodate other components. Compare all that to the more modern solid-state drive, which features no moving parts. It's much more durable, accesses data much faster, operates in complete silence, and can be molded to fit inside modern electronics much easier. But the big drawback is its price. SSDs are significantly more expensive per gigabyte than hard drives, so while computers like the Mac Mini will reboot, launch apps, and open files much quicker than its hard drive-based competitors, it won't have nearly as much space. For example, the HP Z2 Mini features a 500GB hard drive standard compared to the Mac Mini's 128GB solid-state drive. That's almost four times more storage on the Z2, although it would perform much slower. I should also mention that you can upgrade the Z2 to a 256GB SSD, but it'd cost an additional $71, which would bring the total to $912, which is still almost $100 less than the cost of an equivalent Mac Mini. I've actually made the mistake of buying a MacBook Pro with 256GB of storage space, which isn't much at all for a video creator. 
So what I do is I store my large project files on an external drive and use a Mac cleaner app called Clean My Mac X to delete old files, apps, and hidden junk that I wouldn't be able to find easily on my own. It has the best interface of any Mac cleaning app I've used, and the first time it scanned my drive, it found almost 30 gigabytes of unused files that I deleted with a single click. And what makes Clean My Mac X even more useful is that it also locates and removes malware, which can sneak onto your Mac through third-party app downloads or internet extensions. It's also easy to monitor what the app is doing through the menu bar widget. So if you need to free up space on your Mac, just click the link in the description and you'll be able to download a free trial of Clean My Mac X, or you can get a premium license for just $35, which is way cheaper in the long run compared to a monthly subscription service. Now, the Mac storage problem wasn't too bad until the rise of SSDs beginning with the original MacBook Air released in 2008. It came standard with an 80GB hard drive, which was comparable to many other PC notebooks in the same category, but you could upgrade the MacBook Air to a smaller 64GB solid-state drive for an extra $1,000. Now, the cost of SSDs quickly dropped, and Apple was able to offer the same 64GB upgrade for $600 about six months later, but it didn't solve the problem that 64GB of storage space on a notebook was extremely limiting, even in those days. Users coming from the base model MacBook Pro, which featured a 200GB hard drive, were forced to decide which files to keep on their MacBook Air and which to store on an external drive. And as I mentioned earlier, this is an issue for Macs that still exists today, over a decade later. Now, Apple has tried to solve this storage space problem with something called the Fusion Drive, introduced in 2012 with the iMac and Mac Mini. As the name suggests, the Fusion Drive combines a hard drive with a solid state drive in an effort to get the best of both worlds, high capacity and high speed. It achieves this by automatically storing frequently used files on the smaller SSD while moving rarely accessed files to the larger hard drive for long-term storage. Now, reception of the Fusion Drive has been mixed, with some users enjoying the increased performance and others noting the poor integration of both drives, saying they see the Rainbow Beach Ball more often than with a traditional hard drive. And this mixed reaction is probably why Apple hasn't expanded the Fusion Drive to any of their other Macs, and actually removed it from the Mac Mini. So with that semi-failed attempt at trying to bring hard drives and solid-state drives together, Apple's had to deal with the reality that most of their Macs will have to feature more expensive solid-state drives, which forces Apple and their customers into an uncomfortable position. Apple wants to keep margins on hardware high, resulting in price hikes of their base model computers, or they could keep prices the same and simply include a smaller solid-state drive that costs less. And I think Apple did a little bit of both. Remember back in 2018 when Apple updated the Mac Mini? It came standard with a 128GB solid-state drive, which replaced the 500GB hard drive, but it also received a significant price hike, from $500 to $800. So not only were users getting a quarter of the storage space, but they were also paying $300 more for it. And when it comes to the situation customers are in when shopping for a Mac, it's equally as disappointing. The MacBook Air is one of Apple's most popular notebooks, but look at how much storage space comes with the base model, just 128 gigabytes. Compare that with one of its top-selling competitors, the HP Spectre X360. It costs $100 less and comes with a 512 gigabyte solid-state drive. Upgrading to that capacity on the MacBook Air would cost an additional $400. And consider the fact that the 2012 15-inch MacBook Pro shipped with the same 256 gigabytes of solid-state storage as my 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro. But during that period, the iPhone's base storage increased by 300% from 16 to 64 gigabytes. And when it comes to buying more storage space, the iPhone offers a better value than the Mac. Upgrading from 128 to 256 gigabytes costs an extra $100 for the iPhone 11, but $200 for the Mac Mini. So Mac customers face a tough decision. Risk purchasing a lower capacity base model that could run out of space very quickly, or spend an extra few hundred dollars on a larger drive to give yourself more breathing room. 
And although this sales approach is very profitable for Apple, it has a detrimental effect on the user experience. Not only are many users forced to deal with this low storage alert on a regular basis, but they're also forced to repeatedly sift through the finder and decide which files and which apps are worth keeping and which should be deleted. For professional users, things are even worse. Many video editors, me included, have to carry around external drives or pay for cloud services to accommodate our large project files that make our workflow more complicated than it needs to be. So will this problem ever be solved? Well, it's already started to improve with the recent 16-inch MacBook Pro, which offers a better deal per gigabyte than the previous 15-inch model that it replaced, but Apple is still charging significantly more than the competition, which means they're likely to continue leveraging SSDs as an upsell opportunity, leaving customers to pay a premium price for more internal storage. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.